judge mentioned was that right from the first contact with police, he admitted his responsibility. He didn't try to waver. He exactly. accepted that I did it. He told the police he did it. Yeah. And he, he waived his preliminary hearing, which saved his court time and money, and he and he pleaded guilty to the most, uh, the, the most right. serious charge in the criminal code, first degree murder for the killing of his brother. Precisely, yeah. I mean, when you think about it, he just voluntarily walked into a life sentence. You know, without with a no trial. For 25 years. Right, with no parole for 25 years. With no parole for 25 years. He won't be getting out until he's 60. 60. That's a really old age for a guy who's in yeah. his mid-30s. Yeah, it'd be hard to get back into the society. What's he going to do? But, you know, he's a pretty bright guy, and I, we think that he's going to um, hopefully have an opportunity to uh, continue his education. I mean, he was a university student. Uh, he has demonstrated abilities. Um, if they give him an opportunity, you know, that's the other thing is Corrections has their own issues in terms of resources, so we'll see what they can do for him. And, um, you know, and then we'll go from there. And, and another thing that benefit to him was he didn't get consecutive parole. Uh, well, then he'd never see the, never see the light, light of day. day. He 75 years. He could be looking at 75 years in this case, Well, in this case, he would have got 36 and 25. 51 years, right? Because 18, 18, and 25 could, yeah, could have been consecutive. So, but even so, you know, so he comes out, assuming he lives that long, uh, to 80 something when he gets out, if he gets out. If he lives. And, and you and I know, Sam, that uh, uh, jail has, a, has an effect on a person that shortens their lifespan. That's right. Uh, because of the stresses of living essentially inside a cage.